TrueNAS has been the number one uh, network attached storage operating system for quite a while now. It used to fall into the term FreeNAS, but they've since rebranded to TrueNAS and they make a variety of products. Primarily, they're mostly known for their software though. And one thing they've done recently is added a new free operating system. So there's TrueNAS Core, which has been around for forever. And what's currently in development is TrueNAS Scale. So um, I'm calling these unified interfaces under divided backends because they look the same, they act a lot the same, but the internal workings of them are a bit different and um, that might sway which one you wanna use. So let's kind of go on in here. So first I do wanna talk about some TrueNAS alternatives, right? So the most popular by far is going to be TrueNAS, but Open Media Vault and ZygmaNAS in the free open source software realm are also really popular, um, especially Open Media Vault. Um, I would say it's used almost as much as TrueNAS. And then one that I've heard a ton about, I personally haven't used, is called Unraid. So it is licensed, it is paid, it is proprietary, but um, it does have a really big advantage that I did want to kind of just touch on, because um, it does lend itself to um, people who are just building their own stuff and kind of just using spare hardware. Um, Unraid is able to use RAID on a multitude of different um, storage devices. So if you have a two terabyte hard drive and a four terabyte hard drive and a one terabyte hard drive and a one terabyte hard drive, it'll figure that out for you, which is awesome where TrueNAS kind of relies on more traditional RAID where you need four of the same drives or two of the same drives or six of the same drives, right? They all have to be six terabytes, two terabytes, what have you. Where Unraid, while it is proprietary and it's not software I've used before, it does have a really neat use case, but um, personally, it's just not the route I've gone with. So let's talk a little bit about TrueNAS. So TrueNAS, just as a whole, is a storage-focused operating system, or really set of operating systems. They use the ZFS file system, and they support plugins or containers, and it is something that is self-deployed. They do have TrueNAS Enterprise, um, which is not self-deployed. It's actually put into their hardware but um, most of what you're gonna be seeing for self-hosted is gonna be self-deployed instances of TrueNAS. Going forward, um, I've touched on this before in the past, but do you need a dedicated NAS OS? I think is a really solid question to ask. Um, for a lot of people, if you're using Proxmox, it might have those features built into it, or if you're using Windows Server or some kind of Linux server or a free BSD server, what have you, even Mac OS, if you really wanted to kind of jumble that together, it could do the same tasks. So I personally ran an OpenSUSE NAS for about one year, um, and it worked really well for me, but there was just too many sticking points um, because when you're bootstrapping all this by yourself, um, number one, you have to find the software to use, you have to find out how to implement it, um, and then also you just don't have the same level of tooling and interfaces that come with TrueNAS. So you definitely can build your own and run your own, but um, TrueNAS is gonna make that a lot easier, especially to people who a, don't have as much experience, or B, just don't want to fuss with their storage system, because to me, that is the most important server you can have. So I use TrueNAS because I want reliability and security, and it makes me feel better. So definitely think about it. Um, it is a lot of fun to run your own NAS, um, but I think TrueNAS does simplify a lot of it to the point where even I, as a system admin, would prefer to use TrueNAS. So um, we're going to talk about BSD versus Linux here because TrueNAS Core is built on FreeBSD, where TrueNAS Scale is built on Debian Linux. So FreeBSD is a more unified code base. They're both Unix-like. Um, I'd say FreeBSD overall has better stability, and BSD is theoretically more performant. So BSD, I've noticed, um, uses less RAM, uh, it ho hosts less processes in general, um, and those processes often have cleaner code. Um, and while I'm saying it's theoretically more performant, is a, um, a big problem with fr uh, FreeBSD and BSD-based operating systems is um, that they actually have issues when it comes to network protocols. So you're going to notice a bit higher latency in something that is a network-attached storage. Uh, network latency is really important. Um, in the real world, the difference isn't that crazy. Um, but for some mission-critical applications I run, I tried to run them on FreeBSD and I chose to use um, Linux instead because uh, most of my stuff does run through network protocols. So looking at Debian, definitely a ton more community support. Um, TrueNAS does not intend for you to kind of get into the back end of the operating system and fiddle with it, but you very easily can. So if you ever do get to that point and do something like that, you're gonna have more community support when you run into issues. 
Um, again, they're both Unix-like. Um, I would say, again, stronger developer support and more uh, performant in the real world. So again, that's primarily just when it comes to Linux is more bloated than FreeBSD. Um, it's much less bloated than most operating systems, but it does have more bloat. Um, but because there's such strong developer support, it just ends up still running faster in most use cases. And so let's kind of break into TrueNAS Core, the FreeBSD based one, and talk about why you might choose that, right? So it's got the FreeBSD based, and then it has plugins and applications that are based on FreeBSD jails, which I'm gonna to touch on a bit later. Uh, it's very similar to LXC or somewhat like a hypervisor. Um, it has a really nice web UI, has uh, support for virtualization, a lot of data storage integration, so S3 if you're using Amazon. Um, it's got Azure um, support, it's got Cinder if you're using OpenStack, iSCSI, and many more. Uh, it'll do health scans on your devices, provides notifications and has pr plenty of directory services. So the big one is gonna be NIS, is on TrueNAS Core where it's not on TrueNAS Scale. And then it's a scale up deployment compared to the scale out deployment. So you have to increase your hardware to continue to support um, and scale up your environment instead of scaling out to multiple machines. So TrueNAS Scale, again, it's a Debian base. And this one, it. I just think it has a lot more potential and a lot more support, so this is still in development currently. Um, but it has Docker-based applications, and because of that, it has Kubernetes support. It also looks to have LXC support, if that's something you're interested in. Again, more closely towards jails. Um, it has the same web UI, the same virtualization. Um, and then as far as your data storage goes, you're going to have S3 and iSCSI, and more are on the way. So again, actively deployment, uh, actively in deployment. Um, so like Cinder, if you're using OpenStack, is not yet ready. Um, they are targeting late 2022. Um, so you do have a bit more limited data storage integrations. Um, health scans, notifications, same as on TrueNAS Core. Um, and then your directory services, you're going to have all the same, except you're going to lose the NAS and you're going to gain Google two-factor authentication. So both of them have Active Directory, Cabreros, LDAP, and Local, and I just use Local personally. And again, it's gonna be that scale out deployment. So because this is more of a containerized Kubernetes type workload, you're able to actually scale your deployment out onto multiple machines much easier. And that's kind of the goal of scale and that's where the name TrueNAS Scale comes from. So I do wanna break down into jails and dockers because this was personally a really big pain point for me back when I ran TrueNAS Core um, and really a big difference between the two. So this is um, an infographic I grabbed that's looking at LXC versus uh, Docker, but again, it's gonna be very similar. Um, looking at a FreeBSD jail is very similar to LXC, so we can still kind of do some comparison here. Um, and you're gonna notice Docker is much heavier. So it's got the Docker engine, it's got container D, where Linux containers are just using lib LXC. Um, and these handshakes and processes make some really great features for Docker, and I'm a huge proponent for Docker. But if you want a closer to bare metal experience, um, jails are gonna be a much better bet. And breaking further into that, I think we should talk about how um, jails and Docker is used because they actually have very different use cases. So looking here, um, this is an infographic I made. Um, it does say hypervisor, but you can treat that as a free VSD jail environment, right? So um, the comparison of like libLXC would be the same thing. And you can see um, we're going to hold inside of that container kind of an operating system. And inside of there, you're gonna host the applications, right? So um, inside you have your database, your application, your backend functions, that all sits inside of the jail. And it just, in Docker, it's a bit different. So you have the container engine, and then on top of that, you have different containers um, that hold the database, the application, and the backend functions separately. And this is a very simple kind of generic application I've designed here. This is not modeled after any one specific use case, but you're going to see, um, just in the design of jails versus containers, containers are going to be a bit more individualized and they're gonna have their own purposes each where a jail is going to serve one entire function. And you get a little bit further into it. So this is what I'm calling application-based versus solution-based and that's gonna get kind of fuzzy. But what I mean by that is if you wanna deploy Nextcloud, let's say, it's a very popular thing you're gonna run on TrueNAS, it's a solution-based approach on jails. So everything is going to sit inside that jail for uh, your Nextcloud instance, right? So it's a complete package and it's going to act as one uniform um, application. 
where in Docker I would consider it more application-based. And by application-based, I mean the database acts as its own application, the front end and the back end act as their own application, and it's going to allow multiple containers to act together to do one unified task. So better scaling um, because of that, because you can scale out um, vertically or horizontally, where you can't do that as much with a container um, like a jail. Um, it does have a heavier engine compared to jails, but you're gonna get much better documentation in a much larger community. Um, I know I'm a Docker open source contributor, um, and there's a ton of people out there like me, and a ton of corporations out there like me, where jails take more time to configure, and pretty much the plugins that are provided through TrueNAS are gonna be most of what you can get. So uh, I do want to kind of talk about the difference in system requirements because I did find it pretty interesting. So TrueNAS Core um, has lower CPU requirements, looking at a 64-bit CPU versus TrueNAS Scale using a dual core at the minimum, um, where TrueNAS Scale actually does require less um, RAM. So it says 8 gigabytes is the minimum, where 16 is recommended, where for TrueNAS Core you need 16 gigabytes to meet their hardware uh, recommendations. Um, I would still recommend um, running at least 16 gigabytes of RAM in your server either way, but if that is a constraint for you, that's something to think about. Um, and then a 16 gigabyte boot SSD for both of them, you can probably get a 64, 120 gigabyte drive for under 30 bucks. So I'd probably go that route. That's really not a requirement that I find too obtrusive. And then TrueNAS Core says it requires one storage disk while TrueNAS Scale requires two. Um, as long as you have the one boot drive, um, the application will run. It just depends on how you configure your um, storage devices, right? And that's that's really a per usage kind of thing. So I'm going to close out of that. And I do want to show you just kind of the web uh, interface and everything kind of involved. So this is what you're going to be seeing when you get on a dashboard. So I'm actually using the Avahi daemon um, to connect to it instead of using an IP address. Um, but it just logs in uh, by default through local users. So I signed in as root. Uh, you could also create users and kind of manage it that way. Just the username and the password is how you log in. And again, you can hook up LDAP or um, Cabreros or whatever you prefer. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of the interface you're gonna see. I do actually have no drives plugged in right now because I just got off of my OpenSUSE and I'm about to move, so I don't want my drives in my system while I'm moving across the country, so they're in a very secure uh, anti-vibration, anti-static case I've got them in. Um, but it does just provide a lot of great features here. So you've got you know your memory, your CPU, your system information, your networking, and then you also have your storage, and this one's going to be what you pay the most attention to. So what I really like about TrueNAS is its smart detection. So you can configure it to do smart scans on your drives to make sure they're healthy. Um, where that is something I was losing when I was doing it on my own. So it was something I could manually configure, but I think it's a lot easier just to kind of hop into this web interface and real quick, make sure you've got all the green lights on your drives, right? Um, but some other things you've got here is you can do some network configuration. Um, you can do uh, some applications here. So I can kind of hopefully see not too much. Um, you can do virtualization. You can do all of this through the web console. It's kind of what I want to show you. So it's very easy, very simple. You do kind of run into some Phoenix where every once in a while you do have to jump into the terminal. But what's really nice about that is you actually do get the ability to even pull up a shell right here, right? So I am ready to go. I can CD into, you know, et cetera if I want to and kind of see what's going on in here. Um, I can use system CTL. Uh, really whatever you need. So I really do like that the shell is built into here. Um, I am one to SSH into most of my instances, but um, this is really convenient if you're just testing something real quick or you just wanna change one flag or one boot parameter. Um, but yeah, so you can actually do some pretty cool stuff. So you've got your iSCSI if that's something you're into. I'm more of a SMB kind of guy because I do run a few Windows instances and then Samba just works really well with Linux quite honestly. Um, so that is something I will be configuring and turning on once I get my drives back in. Um, and then you've got a bunch of really cool stuff here. So this is how you would configure, let's say your smart tasks, or you can do replication snapshots. You can configure just so many different things. And that's what I think is so great about this is 
I do think um, your NAS is going to be the most important device in your network because it's going to help you bring back your other devices, right? So making this really easy, making it really simple is important because if it's not that way, it's going to take me two, three, four weeks to get to it in my backlog. And by then, who knows what's going to happen, right? So I think TrueNAS is a really great tool. Um, pretty much both of them have about the same UI. Um, in terms of me as someone who is so deep into Docker and Kubernetes, um, TrueNAS scale makes more sense for me. So I think they are both great solutions. I've used both of them. Um, I've actually spent more time in TrueNAS core, um, but I have noticed once I try to get into kind of the nitty gritty and try to configure some things in the jails, it is a bit more complicated in comparison to just using Docker because that's a tool I know really well. So if you happen to have a lot of experience in FreeBSD jails, definitely go for it. Um, even if you don't, I still think it's a great solution. Um, and again, this is still in development, TrueNAS scale. So if you want something that is a bit more tried and true, TrueNAS core is the way to go, um, where they don't really recommend you use this for important workloads right now because it is still in testing. So again, I think TrueNAS scale is the right system for me. Um, I'm just a lot more comfortable in Linux and I think your NAS is something you should be really comfortable in. Um, but definitely try them both out if you have you know the time and the, the hardware and the space. Um, and decide what's best for you. But I really do think it comes down to if you want to use a container engine like Docker or if you want to use something more virtualized like um, Jails. So hopefully that kind of breaks down the differences between the two. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment them below. Um, and I hope you learned something. So thank you guys.